everyone! So Crystal and I are here today to share with you some of the best audiobooks we listened to mm -hmm. in 2018. Now these weren't necessarily put out in 2018, no. we just listened to them this year. We are both really big audiobook lovers, so it was hard to will this down. And I believe we've both picked seven-ish. Ish, yeah. <laughs> a couple, uh, couple extras and maybe what we're currently reading. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to go through, we'll share the narrators, narrators and stuff with you, so if you're interested in these audiobooks you can go check them out. Mm -hmm. um, so what was the first audiobook that you listened to? Well, I didn't know. I had a, I had a, I had a good reading year, mm -hmm. and I think I put together a spreadsheet and I hit 27 audiobooks. Nice. So I was like, that's pretty good. It got me through a lot of flights and a lot mm -hmm. of traveling, so that's always <laughs> nice. Um, but the first one that showed up on my spreadsheet that I liked best was The Upside of Unrequited mm -hmm. by Becky Abertali, and that was narrated by Ariel DeLiesel, if I'm saying it right. And I've read the book before, mm -hmm. but I think I just listened to the audiobook at a time when I like, I just needed something fresh and right. happy, and it was such a great story to listen to and like revisit. And like, when I first started listening to audiobooks, I actually didn't really like female narrators mm -hmm. as much as male narrators. So I found that over the past couple of years, I've been really liking female narrators like just the mm -hmm. same or maybe even better. Yeah. And yeah. It was just a nice story to hear, and I think. Yeah, I could see that. Molly's character would yeah. be great to read aloud. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun and just as romantic as when I first read it. <laughs> Such a nice, well put together story. So, so I, I have a very it. different story as my first one. <laughs> and this is Special Topics in Calamity Physics by Marisha Pessel and this is narrated by, let's see here, Emily Janice Card. Um, this one I don't want to give too much about the synopsis away because when I read the synopsis, it spoils something that happens like three quarters of the way through oh, the book, and I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> um, but this is about a kind of smart girl named Blue who starts attending an elite boarding school, mm -hmm. and she falls in with a strange group of friends, and they're kind of obsessed with this teacher named Hannah, and ser a series of like inexplicable events mm -hmm. start happening. And it's very mysterious. And Blue's a great character, but I just thought the narration of this like completely just like sucked me in. Nice. Um, a lot of the audiobooks I have m mentioned, I'm going to mention, kind of have a few gimmicks to them that I feel like enhance the experience. Yeah. Um, this one didn't necessarily, but it is. It was just so well read that I found myself just like, just, like staring into space, being like, have to like stop what I'm doing to like, like, oh, something's well, happening. I need to, what? I need to really focus right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, Emily Jenny's card did a wonderful job with this book, and um, most of you probably know Marissa Pestle for Night Film, which is mm -hmm. kind of her most famous one. But I also, if you like boarding school books, like and I sure do. <laughs> I really enjoyed this one as well, and the narration was great. Nice, cool. Next so up, my second one is The Book of Dust, The Belle mm. Sauvage by Philip Pullman, which is kind of like a prequel to the Golden Compass mm -hmm. books. And in this book, our main character, whose name I cannot remember and I apologize, <laughs> kind of rescues Lyra as a little baby Ooh. from this nunnery that she's been hiding out at. Right. She's just been stashed there for her protection. But um, there's this big storm comes and the, there's this big flood. So this young boy who works at the inn, like the tavern, mm -hmm. he um, he gets his little boat, La Belle Sauvage, that he's fixed up and it's his best, most prized possession. And he rescues her and goes downriver to <laughs> go to London to find her father. And it's just this massive adventure. And it's so atmospheric and it's just so exciting. Like I couldn't stop listening. And it's narrated by Michael Sheen, who's like a famous British yeah. actor, and oh, he cool. had such a great voice, yeah. and he did such a good job. And yeah, it was... I didn't realize Lyra was actually part of that story. Yeah. Even as an infant. She's, yeah, she's <laughs> just this bundle of crying baby. That's interesting, cool. <laughs> but yeah, it was good, and I really like Michael Sheen. I, mm -hmm. I never really think of what he's in, with the exception of Frost Nixon, but he does so much. But he's yeah. going to be in the new Good Omens show. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I can, his face is, he has a very distinct face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I think my next one is going to be Binti, which I'm hiding down here. Um, Binti by Nettie Akorafor. This is definitely one of the shortest audiobooks <laughs> I listened to this year, because this is a novella that's, I think, just 100 pages long. Um, I really, really loved Binti. Mm -hmm. um, but this is narrated by Robin Miles. And I really like this one because um, 
it the narration really reflects like her culture. Oh. So she has like a very different, di distinct way of speaking. Interesting. Um, and so listening to her speak, it really felt like I got to know Binti as a character better. Because okay. Because you've read all. all I've read of them all before. three. Um, so just in hearing her speech, and the way she talks, I think because she does grow up in a very different culture than our mm -hmm. own, it really made just brought her off the page as a character. Even in this, like, I think the audiobook was maybe two hours long. Oh, wow. Like, it's really short, but it was very well done. Um, and I've listened to quite a few things that Robin Miles has narrated now, and she just does a fantastic job, so. Nice. And, yeah, if you're looking to get into sci-fi, audiobook or no audiobook, Binti's a great place to start. Yeah, you, teeny, lent, tiny. you lent me that one, and it was really good, mm -hmm. and I really want to read the rest. But now, if the audiobooks are so good, they're they're really really good. I'll dive into those. Yep. yep. Yes. As a complete side note to what we're doing, I also listened to the world's shortest audiobook while I was on what vacation was recently, that? and I listened to How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Oh, cute. <laughs> and it was just so charming to listen to at the holidays. I can see that. <laughs> so I've actually been listening to a lot of plays this mm -hmm. year, which I want to do more of next year. I really enjoyed them, and my favorite was Much Ado About Nothing by William Shakespeare. And it's my favorite Shakespeare play, full stop. I love every movie adaptation. I loved reading it. It's just so funny and witty mm -hmm. and sharp. And this one was the, the BBC Radio Collection edition, so it's a little bit enhanced, has an ensemble cast. Oh, fun. But the main character who played Benedict was David Tennant. Oh, great. So it's yeah. just great hearing his little Scottish voice. <laughs> and um, the other woman was Samantha Spiro, who I'm not 100% familiar with, but she was really good. But with a great British cast, mm -hmm. you hear voices that you recognize, even right. though you don't. they're not listed in the... Yeah, yeah. In the credits, but it was a lot of fun. Their banter back and forth was really good. And that would be fun. I find with the BBC collections, they're enhanced just a little bit. So you hear a bit of walking, you hear yeah. a bit of singing. There's like the knocks and stuff. And yeah, it was a great way to just revisit a favorite mm -hmm. story and just sit, because it's only a couple hours. So yeah. I think I just sat down with some hot chocolate and some knitting or something. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, this is incredible. That would be good. I don't, haven't seen or read much to do about nothing. So. I think it's on my TBR show, oh, so cool, maybe right. I'll pick up the radio play. Yeah, it's really, it's really, really good. Cool. Yeah. Um, next up is a uh, book that really shocked me that I listened to earlier this year, yeah. and that is Two Boys Kissing by David Levithan. And David Levithan reads this, so it's narrated by the author, and I don't know what I was expecting from this. On the surface, it sounds... Um, quite simple. It is about two boys who want to break the world record for the world's longest kiss. <laughs> and it's like 32 hours long or something. Oh, that's <laughs> um, and kind of the, just like the people around them while this event is happening. Um, but it's narrated by a Greek chorus of deceased gay men who died from AIDS. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's like quite, in, wow. like it's very sad. But like so profound, like it sounds powerful. Yeah. So it's and again, it's quite short. But because on the yeah again on the surface, I was like, oh, it's about a two boys trying to break a, ki a kissing record. That's cute. Um, but while it's happening, it is like being yeah. If there's a Greek chorus of these gay men trying to like give these people these boys advice and oh, that's, wow, it's really really good. And David Levinson does a great job reading it. I do so. love David Levinson. Yeah. I feel like a few of these books are actually going to end up on my top 10 favorite books of the year list oh, really? too, so we might be revisiting <laughs> these books, some of these books soon, because yeah, this was just fantastic, and I still think about it, so. That's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so next up for me is The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick mm. Rothfuss. Um, this is 43 hours of storytelling, and I loved it because it's a book I've read before, mm -hmm. and I, I actually like listening to audiobooks that I've read before because it's easy to like revisit while multitasking without having to pay a hundred percent of the yeah. attention you would if you have never heard it before but it was one of those books because i know the story so well i listened to it, to it like throughout seven months of this year like if i needed mm -hmm. something to like kill an hour or i was going to bed and i didn't know what to listen to or i didn't want to read i would just listen to like an hour of this yeah. and it was just easy to follow the story along but now I'm primed for the third book that will never come. <laughs> Patrick! So, I follow a subreddit on Reddit that's just dedicated to the King Killer Chronicles, mm -hmm. and everybody's like, dude, we need it! But uh, it was narrated by Nick Podell, 
Hodel, who I haven't heard before, but I, he did a really great job with all the like, because there's so many characters mm -hmm. and like with all the teachers and it's, it's really good. I think I oh. read it as an audiobook as well. And it was great to hear the, um, the song mm -hmm. that he wrote about Ambrose, <laughs> the, yeah. the jackass song, and I was <laughs> like, this is, this makes it. It's great, yeah. Um, on that note. I have another one. I have one that also features music and songs. Oh, cool. Um, and so that is For a Muse of Fire by Heidi Heilig. Um, I tried to read like a really early manuscript of this okay. several months ago, uh, like quite a long time ago now, and I couldn't <laughs> get into it. But then I picked up the audiobook after it came out and it was fantastic. Nice. Um, so there is a lot of like original songs in here and they actually perform the music like they actually like there's they sing and it's, it's just really although i have to because i listen to my audiobook sped up oh. so when the songs come <laughs> i have to be like okay slow the audiobook down so it doesn't sound crazy they sound like the <laughs> yeah <laughs> but this is a story about a girl named jetta who has the ability to um tether the souls of the recently deceased into inanimate objects so oh. her family has like um like a shadow puppet troop so it seems like they're like really like talented puppeteers, but really the oh, souls oh, inside the puppets. So cool! Um, it's a really really cool world. I'm so glad I decided to give it another shot after that early manuscript because it was fantastic. And also, it's a, it's an Asian inspired fantasy. When I picked up the physical book after the songs they sang, you can't probably see, but this is all sheet music. So if you, I can't read music anymore. I used to be able to, mm. but you could perform the songs, which is really cool. Neat. Like how they're actually meant to sound, not just like a, a, a rendition that you make up in your mind, right? right? Yeah. But yeah, and this was narrated by Emily Wu Zeller, who narrates a lot of young adult fiction. So she does a fantastic job, and I think I don't know if she did the singing. I'd be curious to know if she hmm. did the singing as well. Be worth but, looking up. But yeah, this was a really really good audiobook, and it matches my scarf. Cool. Don't <laughs> really, you look great? <laughs> Um, my next one is actually one that I listened to quite recently while I was on vacation, but it's a book that I've been seeing everywhere. It's always like on a staff pick or mm. like a book list or like someone's book club reading list. Right. And that's The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. Mm. Um, it's a historical fiction that takes place between, well, it's kind of like a dual timeline. So we are in 1915 during the First World War and this woman, Eve Gardner, is joins a spy network called the Alice Network. Mm -hmm. And then later, in 1947, Charlie comes to London to meet Eve to help her find her lost cousin. Mm -hmm. And it's just this beautiful story. Like a dual narrative. Yeah, thing. and they have, they have things in common as characters, even though she's just like this, it's like harsh, abrasive, old spy woman with like mangled hands <laughs> from some like incident she was mm -hmm. in. But the actual like, I'm not always a big historical fiction mm -hmm. fan, and it was just so captivating and well done, like, to see the, these women going undercover and just taking out the Germans. <laughs> taking out the but, Germans. Uh, it was narrated by Saskia Marleveld, who I've never heard of before, but she did a really great mm -hmm. job taking both women and making them completely separate characters. And there was a nice little romance in there that I was completely not expecting. Because <laughs> when I first met this guy, I thought he was way older than he actually was. Right. Like, I must have missed a sentence. <laughs> and then later, he's, like, hooking up with one of the characters. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> what? And then you realize he's only, like, 25. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh, oh so now it's romantic <laughs> instead of creepy. <laughs> oh, dear. Um... Okay, so next up is a book that I think a lot of people listen to on audio this year, and for a good reason, because it's fantastic, and that is Sadie by Courtney Summers. Um, this is like, um, you know the podcast Serial? No. It's, but, uh, but it's okay. a lot of, it's a very famous podcast, but basically there's a, Sadie goes missing, it is our titular character, and there's a man in here who has a podcast, and he's trying to investigate to find out what happened to her. Oh, cool. So there's a the podcast is actually in the book. So it's like a true crime podcast, and so you're listening, and you're getting Sadie's side of the story, and you're also listening to this podcast. About her. About her, this man trying to find her. Um, really, really well done. It's 
yeah, I got a great book. If you are kind of nervous about audiobooks, and but you like podcasts, mm -hmm. this one is definitely one to dip your toes into, I think, because it definitely has that feel to it. Yeah, I really liked it. Very eerie and yeah. I won't say much more than that. Cool. But that one is has a, actually has a full cast to that one as well. Oh, nice. So it's narrated by Rebecca Soleil, who again is a really big audiobook narrator, Fred Berman, Dan Bittner, and Gabra Zachman. Hmm. So quite a few people dipping their toes in that one. <laughs> I really like the ensemble mm -hmm. cast ones, like the uh, the Illuminae Files books mm -hmm. are really good for oh, that. Oh, yeah, so good. Those are so great. Um, next up for me is, speaking of great narrators, is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams and narrated by Stephen Fry. Now, <laughs> <laughs> this was completely accidental and only happened like a week ago. Mm. Um, I was meeting up with a friend who was talking about the Dirk Gently series and comparing it to the Netflix show. So I'm like, I knew it was a book, but mm. I'm gonna give it a shot now because I just had a conversation about it. So I started listening to the Dirk Gently audiobook and I just got confused. <laughs> Those books are weird. <laughs> because it was like one of the enhanced versions too that mm. the BBC did. So there was a lot of like background noise right. and a lot of people talking, but the cast was great. But I'm like, you know, I think I need to read this. Mm -hmm. But while I was on the library app, the Hitchhiker's Guide was available and just there. And I'm like, I've read this before, but it's been a while. And for three nights, I just hung out with Stephen Fry in space. So funny. And it was incredible. And he did such a great job, like he always does. And I think it's a good extra gateway because I haven't read the other sequels. I've only mm -hmm. read Hitchhiker's Guide. Right. So I think I'm going to continue on as part of a New Year's goal. They're all very and, funny. Like, <laughs> read the rest of them, yeah. yeah. Or listen to the rest of them because mm -hmm. I think, does he do all of them? Uh, I don't know. I only read those ones physically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I should listen to them because Stephen Fry is my fave. He is. <laughs> and he's, oh, it's just so good because sometimes he'll come up with this voice and I'm like, that doesn't even sound like you. That. Yeah, I mean, I know you're a great actor, but like, I don't, there's not even a hint of Stephen Fry's voice mm. in some of these characters, and it was really, really impressive, and I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, those books are yeah. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so my next one's kind of in the vein of Sadie again, and that is Radio, Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. Um, this was fantastic. I knew I was going to like it, but I loved it. And again, in the vein of Sadie, it's not about a podcast, but it is about a like YouTube show. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about this girl who is obsessed with a show called Universe City, who which is narrated by a mysterious figure called Radio Silence. Um, and it was just, and it also, every episode of this show starts with, hello, I hope somebody is listening. <laughs> um, and nobody knows who this guy is. And she ends up meeting. And oh. like figuring out who this guy is and they kind of team up to do radio silence together and it's just a fan one of the best it's very like dark at times and quite intense but it's just one of the best like friendship stories oh cool that i've ever read between this girl and this guy because i feel like it's so rare that you get a YA book where they are literally just friends and they yeah. don't want to bone. <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> and it, it was so fantastic. And the audiobook, again, had, like, the... It was just so well done and, like, had the, sh the show, University, was, like, narrated like a podcast. And it was just... Really, really liked it. Super well done. Nice. I'm super intrigued to read more of, from Alice Oseman. And this one was narrated by Aisha Kale, which uh, is a British narrator. Oh, okay. And I feel like I've... Um, listen to a few of her other books as well, but she has a really distinct British voice. Nice. Yes. Nothing I love more than a good British yeah, narrator. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my last official one is a, a memoir, and it's called Failure is an Option by H. <laughs> John Benjamin. And it's also read by H. John Benjamin. He's a He's an actor and a very popular voice actor. He's the voice of Archer and Bob mm -hmm. on Bob's Burgers which are two of my favorite characters. And I always said, like, years ago, I'm like, I love this man's voice. I wish he could just, like, read me a story. Right. But one better is the anecdotes he tells within this memoir because they're hysterical. They're laugh-out-loud funny. You don't... It's hard to believe some of the stories are real. Like, he tells this one story about when he's a kid. His parents are never home, so he goes and hangs out at the neighbor's house. And one day, he's just in his neighbor's house alone, and their neighbors are getting robbed, and he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> so he just kind of sits there, and the, the the robbers are like, do you live here? He's like, no, I, I just hang out here. My house is up the hill. So, like, two weeks later, 
his house gets robbed <laughs> because the guys know he's never home. Because he, it's just like these absolutely absurd stories that you never think could really happen to anyone, but told by Archer. Right. Like, it's his voice that makes... Like, if you're a fan of those two shows, it's just worth listening to this right. book. Because it's just... Sounds great. <laughs> it's... <laughs> I can't even... Um, so my last one is, again, narrated by the author, right? Yes. <laughs> so again, narrated by the author, and that is Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zusak, best known, of course, for The Book Thief. Um, this is his new book, Long Awaited, the hyped up, and it lived up to the hype for oh, me. That's good. So this is a very quiet story about family, and it focuses on five brothers, and they have a, a dead mother, and their father isn't in the picture, and they're just kind of raising each other. It's very Australian. Mm. Um, <laughs> and it was just fantastic. And there's, it also flashes back to like how their mother made it to Australia. And like, so there's all sorts of different timelines. But what I thought was super interesting about this book is there is a passage in this book in which um, it's describing their mother, these brothers, their mother is, teaches, um, she teaches like kind of kids with learning disabilities how to read or like okay. poor wrong side of the track kind of kids trying to give them a leg up and teach them how to read and what she does and she finds it helps is she puts on a metronome okay for the cadence to help people read and he reads it like it's a metronome oh, that's really so cool. it's like he just like takes it like a step further because like, like when i was listening to it i was like it's a very interesting way he's kind of like following a beat as he's reading and then you get to that passage i'm like that was intentional! <laughs> like, he reads like you're listening to a metronome at the same time, which is just really cool. Just, like, really just, like, made it, like, a more special experience to be, like, he is, like, doing this thing intentionally in this book, and he has this, like, great Australian accent, and it was just... <laughs> I loved this book so much. It, it's hard to describe the plot, because it is very much just this kind of story about family and how all these brothers ended up where they are. And Interesting. It's a... Uh, I, I loved it, and I would like to re-listen to it soon, even though I just listened to it. <laughs> but yeah, it was fantastic. So, I have an honorable <laughs> mention, because I started listening to this book this summer on an airplane, so it was like two hours of solid mm -hmm. book, and I really got into it, but because it's so long, and I got so busy with everything else, I haven't revisited, but I think I do, and that is Star Wars Thrawn by Timothy Zahn, who has written many, 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 many Star Wars books mm -hmm. in the extended universe. And I was familiar with Thrawn as a character who exists, but I didn't really know anything about him until Star Wars fans out there. I started watching Star Wars Rebels, and in the later season, he's like the main big right. bad, and he has quite a role. So um, Star Wars Thrawn, the book, is basically an origin story written about him. and. It has a few enhanced features, like sound effects of right. ships and shooting guns and bombs going off. But this one lowly cadet, discover, he's discovered on this, like, alone on this entire planet. And then he's kind of, like, brought back into the, like, the Empire mm. cadet school place. And he's immediately, like, upped in ranks. But he keeps this kid that finds him as his assistant. But... It's just so well done that, like, you hear his inner thoughts mm -hmm. in some places and you can kind of tell the difference. And you can just see the, like, the deception in a right. lot of it. And I was super, super captivated and I really want to get back into it because it's, Sounds yeah. Good. Interesting. And it's in space and it's so deceiving. <laughs> and then this other woman, you could kind of see these these paths coming together, mm -hmm. but I'm just like... You to it and it's um, narrated by Robert... Glenister, who I feel I've heard his name somewhere right. before, but he is very good. Cool. It's, yeah. So now we can, we decided it'd be fun if we talked about the books we are currently listening to. Not yes. necessarily the best books. Just what's, what's currently What's happening. going on with us. So what's the one you have on the go right now? I am, it's hard to tell with spice, but in timing, but I'm a few hours into Lethal White by Robert ah, Galbraith. Yeah. I've already I know seen. everyone here has read it already, but I was just so put back by that giant it's quite book. Big. It's quite big. <laughs> it is. So I think right even before the book was released, I think I put it on hold. Mm. Joined the wait list at the library for the audiobook and it came through uh, just sometime last week, I think. So I listened to that one as well. Getting, it's quite good. Yeah. I think I've listened to all of those ones. 
I've listened to, I've read the first two and I listened to three and I'm listening to four. Yes. And I currently have a Stephen King book that I had never heard of from the library. It's called The Dark Half. Hmm. Um, I can't remember who it's narrated by, I'm sorry. Um, but it is so creepy. <laughs> Stephen King doesn't usually creep me out. Like he's right. usually more like a gore kind of like unsettling. Right. But this is a story about um, when this man was a kid, he had migraines and they did like exploratory surgery and they discovered that he had like absorbed a twin. Mm. And so they had like removed like parts of a body from his brain and they decided not to tell him. And they're like, they're just worry the family. Right. They'll say it was a tumor. Like, right. It's not a big deal. And now, again, as an adult, um, he's a writer who had created a like alter ego writer like Richard Bachman. So like, oh, like okay, Stephen right. King did for Richard Bachman. Yeah. Um, this writer created this alter ego and now all of a sudden people start getting murdered and all of his fingerprints are all over the crime scenes and he get he keeps getting and he gets calls from his alter ego that's and so weird it's so unsettling um i don't know what's happening yet i'm not too far <laughs> into it but it's like but it's so well done and i'm like <laughs> like I, i'm gonna add that to the yeah, list yeah i've never sounds... even heard of it before um but yeah it was quite good so far Crazy. All right, so those were some of the best audiobooks we've listened to this year. Mm -hmm. If you guys like audiobooks and listen to audiobooks, let us know some of your favorites down below because we're always looking for more. Definitely. Um, and if you like this video, please give a big thumbs up and subscribe for our videos. <laughs> Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye. Bye.